I will sing forever of your love come down with my hands to heaven shout your praises loud I was lost in darkness when you pulled me out I will sing forever of your love come down two things for me either grab one of those sheets that are should be in the pew in front of you somewhere along that pew uh, and fill that out and drop it in either one of our offering chests which are back by the camera in the back or by the side door or if you would text welcome to 865-276-8940 if you'll text that we'll send you a link that you can put your information in just to let us know that you have been here and we would greatly appreciate having that record um, if you have a prayer request you can also send that through that same texting service or you can fill out the uh, the form in the back of the pew and drop it in the uh, offering chest and we would love to be able to pray for you this week all right a few things first today after uh, after service we're going to be having our holiday meal I've seen quite a few things coming in this morning looks good smells good down in the youth house so we would hope that you would come uh, and join us after if you if you forgot didn't bring a side or whatever just just come join us anyway come have come have a bite to eat a little bit of fellowship and hang out with us um, for a little while today as we celebrate uh, just the, the holidays and, and this time coming up here in the next few weeks, all right? Um, Christmas choir practice is going to be tonight and next week. Both will be at 6 o'clock. That's correct, 6 o'clock tonight. 
Um, this coming next Sunday, December the 18th at 7 o'clock, I'm going to meet here um, to go caroling. So if you want to go caroling next Sunday night at 7 o'clock, you meet here. This is, this is Deb and I think Morgan Lanham are putting this together. I don't know if put Morgan on the spot. They've talked about it. So be here at 7 o'clock. If you want to go caroling next week, they're going to set some places up to go. Be able to do that. Um, if you have someone in mind and you want to let uh, Deb know she, so she can uh, maybe get that scheduled in, uh, that would be, uh, am I good? Yes. Okay, sorry. It's like I thought you were, I thought that was you interrupting me actually for a minute there. Like, am I saying something wrong? So 7 o'clock. Let Deb know if you want to do that and uh, we'll get that set up for that. Okay? Um, business meeting this Wednesday night. Uh, business meeting will be this Wednesday night. And then the next two Wednesdays, we will not have service as we go into the Christmas week and uh, New Year's week. So this, this Wednesday night will be business meeting. Then the next two Wednesday nights, there will not be um, any, anything on campus. And I did not ask you, Tony, iron sharpens iron. We off for the next few weeks till the first of the year, I guess, at this point. So no iron sharpens iron on Thursday night for the rest of the year. There you go. You're, you are off there. All right. And I think I covered everything. So holiday meal today. Christmas choir practice night at 6, caroling next Sunday night, um, and business meeting on Wednesday, okay? So put those things in your calendar, and let's continue to worship this morning, all right? Let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I love you. God, I thank you for this day. Father, I thank you for this time to be in your house. God, I pray that as we um, go into the rest of the service, God, that, um, that, that we would just lift up our, our hearts uh, to you, God, that we would... Um, lift up our voices to you, God, that we would praise you and worship you um, for the King of Kings that you are, God, that we would just put behind us all the things of this week, God, and just um, just focus on you at this point in time today, God. I pray that you be with Ray as he comes to speak. God, use him uh, this morning. Fill him uh, with your Holy Spirit, God. Use him in a mighty way um, to bring your word this morning. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, as we continue our service this morning, we invite you, if you will, to stand and sing with us today. Two weeks ago, we were hope that the prophecy came and the hope of Jesus. Last week, we were peace, the Prince of Peace. Today, we celebrate the love of Jesus today. So worship with us today. Come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Come all you sinners, come find his mercy, come to the table he will satisfy. Taste of his Not just to be born in a manger, but to give his life for us. What a great gift we celebrate today. Bring all your failures, bring your addictions. Come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting.
about Christmas and we think about uh, it's a season of giving and we, we go shopping and we get gifts and and, and it just kind of occurred to me this morning that uh, the, the last little chorus of that song really sums us up pretty well, doesn't it? You, you look at the manger scene and yes, I know the wise men came later, we, we get that, but they brought their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh and most of us don't have a whole lot of any of those. But what we do have are lots of issues and lots of problems and lots of burdens and lots of things and struggles and failures and shortcomings and sins and, and out and right disasters. And Jesus invites us to come and bring those. And what kind of gift is that for a savior? But he loves us so much that he was willing to take all of that. And not only that, he took all of our sin upon himself on the cross, giving us the greatest gift of all. That is love that we cannot fathom or comprehend or, or understand, but, but boy, do we appreciate it today. So we invite you to just think about the things that we give Jesus and the love that he has given us today. We're, we're going to invite you to sing with us some more as we continue, but you can remain seated as, the, as we continue this morning.
Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, today that you are mighty to save. Thank you for that day 60 years ago when you spoke to my heart and invited me to be your child. Lord, I thank you that you're a God that's mighty to save. You can change a life. You can change directions in a person's life. And Lord, I pray that even today as we hear your word, that by your Holy Spirit, you would speak to us. Give us a new direction in life that we might allow you to be Lord and King in our life. That, Lord, even as those men in our Sunday school lesson today brought people to Jesus, help us to be able to do that. Help us to be willing to do that. Use us in a great way for your glory. Thank you for all you can do for us. In Jesus' name, amen.
never dreamed to go to another city. I never dreamed to go to another country. I never dreamed to learn to talk another language. But God made possible. When I was 11 years old, my family was very poor. I used to work in the street selling, selling things. One day my dad took my money because he was alcoholic. He had three more families. So I made my own prayer. I said to God, you want to be my father, I need you here. I need you here. I had a trouble in my teens because of uh, my family and I ran away from home. And uh, we had a program with the IMB missionaries running the call, Tele Amigo. So I went to that place because I had trouble with myself. I want to kill myself. And they really gave me all the support and prayer for me. I met a missionary called Barbara Rivers. She was putting some pictures and video of the five American missionaries where they were killed in Ecuador by the Indians in the jungle. When I saw the pictures and the face of the missionaries, I started crying. And I said to Lord, I do nothing, I'm only going to church. And these people came far away from their own country and died because of love of our people. So and they said to the Lord, here I am, I want to be a missionary. Missionaries like Barbara Rivers, I was a model, a very real model. I learned how to go places where there's nothing and start something. So I realized not only in Ecuador I need to be saved, but everywhere. So I became pray for India. I was the first Latino to go. I worked for 12 years. One thing God told me to preach the gospel, not to be locked in my house. If I want to be locked in my house, I stay in my country. I came back from India. The IMB missionary received me, Guy Mills and Linda, and a friend from Guatemala. He told me, the Lord take you back to Latin America to not be just one Julieta, sino hundreds of Julietas. Send Latinos to the nations. And after that, it started an impact mundial. We do mobilization, training, and sending missionaries to the nations. I believe we are global Christians. Jesus told us to go to the nations, to preach to everyone and everywhere and every time. My dream is to see every church be mobilized to become a missionary church. It's my dream. Good morning, church. Good to see everybody here today on this uh, <clears throat> two more Sundays before Christmas, today and next Sunday. And uh, looking forward to that. I love Christmas, I love to decorate, I love all the things that go along with it, and I love this time of the year when we can, can focus our attention upon the um, Light and Moon Christmas offering. Um, I don't know if this church sets a goal uh, for, for the offering, but I know some churches do, and um, I just pray that you will be faithful to give to the Light and Moon Christmas offering. It is an offering that goes to support probably half of the budget for the International Mission Board. Most of it goes to the field. Most of it goes to support missionaries and to be able to provide the necessary things that they need while they're on the field, like housing and transportation and, and other needs that they have to be able to do their ministry. On the table in the foyer, uh, there is a, a pamphlet that says a week of prayer for international missions. 2022 prayer guide. Uh, normally in years past they have done this the first week of December but I think they've got it now to where you can do it anytime and uh, this is something that you can do as a family. It's eight, uh, eight stories. Some of that you've seen on the videos and um, you can just share it around the uh, breakfast table, supper table, or whatever you want to want to do but it's something that you can do to help focus your attention uh, upon international missions. Another thing I brought uh, with me uh, is some magazines called the Voices of the Martyrs magazines and I receive one of these every month or so and um, there's not a whole lot back there, it's just one, one issue from different things, uh, past weeks that I've received 
And I thought I'd bring them. Uh, if you want to take one home and read it, it won't take you long to read it. It's very short. But it will open your eyes as to what is happening around the world today as far as mission. I've mentioned this many times in my sermons uh, about what m people are experiencing around the world, the, the persecution that they're under, and sometimes even being put to death simply because they're Christian. And um, so I brought those and laid them on the table. If you would like to take one, read it, bring it back, put it on the table, somebody else can take it, read it. Uh, but it is an eye-opening uh, thing, and you can, you can get online uh, with uh, Voices of the Martyrs, and you can get them to send you your own subscription to this magazine. It's free of charge. So anyway, those two items are back on the table, and hope that you will take those and um, use those. Our memory verses um, for the past few weeks, uh, one was in Romans 8, 15 through 17, and that says that you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby or by whom we can cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness to our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. And then last week we did 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 22. Sounds like a lot of verses, but it's not. It's very short. It says, Rejoice always, uh, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Test all things. Young people hate the word test, but anyway, that's what we have to do. We have to look at what is there and we're to make sure that it is of God and not of the world. But test all things and hold to what is good and abstain. In other words, do not get involved in things that are evil. And then today's verse is one that's been used uh, several times uh, by me in my sermons and also uh, in other venues, but it's John 16:33 which Jesus said, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. How many of you have, have, can, can honestly say that you have experienced total peace throughout your life? Anybody? I can't. Uh, I raised my hand, but I can't say that because I have not experienced total peace throughout my life. Because Jesus went on to say, he says, in the world you will have tribulation, he says, but be a good cheer, because I have overcome the world. So we're going to live on this earth. We're going to experience tribulation. We're not going to experience total peace on this earth. But there is one place that we will experience true peace, and that is in God's kingdom, in heaven, in eternity, for those who believe. And that leads me to my passage for today. In dealing with Jesus as God's perfect gift of love. We have looked at Jesus, as Mitch said, in the first Sunday after Thanksgiving. We looked at uh, this prophecies in Isaiah where it says, For unto us is born, and he was referring to unto us is born a Savior, Jesus, the Messiah. And then last week we looked at an attribute of Jesus as talked about in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 where it says he's wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father and prince of peace. Jesus, prince of peace. And today we want to look at Jesus, God's perfect gift of love. For it says in John 3, 16, 17 and 18, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in their heart on him shall be saved, shall not perish, but shall be saved. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And it says, he who believes in him is not condemned, 
And, that, and that, that's, to me, a tremendous statement. It says, he who believes in him, Jesus, is not condemned. But he who does not believe in him is condemned already by his own unbelief because he has not believed in the only begotten Son of God. Thank you, Father, for your word and that each time that we open your word, Lord, that it does speak to our hearts, it does encourage us, it does help us, Lord, to, to understand who you are and what you are about and the things that you have called us to be. We thank you, Lord, for this Christmas season. We thank you, Lord, for the progression that has taken place as we have looked at, at the prophecies that were given of your coming. And then we looked at last week how you are the Prince of Peace, even though we don't experience peace in this world, that, Lord, we know that there's coming a day that we will experience total and complete peace. And today, Lord, we want to look at the fact that you love us so much that you were willing to sacrifice your throne in heaven to come and to live among the likes of us, your creation and to die for us and to rise from the grave and to give us life beyond this earth. When I think of that, Lord, it is just so hard sometimes for me to fathom that you love me so much to do that. But you do, and you did. And I thank you. For it's in your name I pray. Amen. You know, a gift is, is something that we get, okay? This time of the year, we talk about gifts. We talk about going out and buying and doing all these things so that, you know, when Christmas Day comes, we're in there feverishly unwrapping gifts and, and throwing paper everywhere to find out what it is that that gift has come. But it's just something that's either that we give to somebody else or something that we receive from somebody else. It could be on a physical basis. It could be a spiritual gift that God has given to us. But a gift is something that's either given or is received. And many times when we, we, when we see the gift, there, there are all kinds of different kinds of gifts. At Christmas time, you know, that I remember one Christmas that um, some particular doll had come out and our daughter decided that that's what she wanted for Christmas. Well, at that time, as a minister of the gospel, I wasn't making a whole lot of money and Judy wasn't working. She was a stay-at-home mom. And um, we just couldn't afford it. We just absolutely could not afford that doll. So we found a substitute. And I don't think Ann ever played with that doll because it wasn't what she wanted. It wasn't that particular gift. And many times we, in our mind, say, okay, I want this particular thing. And then when we don't get it, we're so disappointed. But then there are other times when we get gifts that... Uh, that we do want, and, and we're excited about that. And sometimes we get gifts that we don't even expect. And a person has really given a lot of thought to, to going out and, and finding just the right gift for this individual. And when a gift is open, there's a, just a sense of, of awe and joy that this person would even think to give me something like this. And then there are sometimes when we get these gifts that uh, nobody has put a whole lot of thought into and it's a, it's a sweater that you put on, the sleeves go down here and whatever and you know that it's just, it, that's just not going to work for me. So we, first thing we do today after Christmas, we head to the store to exchange the gifts so we can get something that will fit or something that will work for us. But you know there's one gift. One gift that was given to you and to me that we can't exchange because it was God's gift to us. And he sent his son Jesus into the world to, 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 to be that gift. And there are many people in this world today who, who, who just, as I read in the scriptures, they, they just 
They don't want the gift. They want to exchange it or they want something else or they want what the world has to offer. They just don't want that gift. But God said, I love you. I love you enough to send my son, my only begotten son, in the midst of the creation that I have made because I love you. And God sent that gift to an undeserving world. We, we didn't deserve that. God made a covenant with his people, Israel, and they rejected the covenant. They did everything under the sun but abide by the covenant that God had made with them. They even put rules and regulations to it, much like what our government does with the law that is made by the legislators, and I've mentioned this before, and then you got the bureaucracy out there that comes up with the rules and regulations this thick. Well, that's what the, that's what the Jews did. That's what the, Israel, the children of Israel did. They put all these rules and regulations attached to the law of God. And basically the law of God just says, I love you, obey me, and I will give you everything that you could ever imagine. But the people said, well, you know, if, if, if you're going to be a part of this covenant, you have got to abide by certain rules and regulations. You have got to be a Jew, a descendant of Abraham. And if you're not, then the only way that you can become a descendant of Abraham is that you have to come here as a proselyte and we'll, elect, we'll allow you to become part of us, but you're not a descendant of Abraham. But God said, okay, the law... I gave them the law. They didn't abide by the law. The law was not an end in itself. The law was given to help people to know how to live. So there's only one other way. One other way. No angel could do it. The only thing that can be done to save my people is that my son Jesus must come to the earth. I can't imagine what that conversation was like in heaven. I can't imagine God and Jesus sitting around discussing, discussing all the things that were going on in the world and, and, and coming up with this decision of saying, you've got to go. And Jesus saying, I know. I'm willing to go. But as you know in the scriptures that even after Jesus knew why he was here, that in the garden he pleaded with God and he said, God, if there's any, any other way, I did not really understand how difficult it would be. But then he said, but God, from the very beginning to right now, it was the plan and I'm willing to do whatever you ask me to do. And he did. And so he came into the undeserving world and the, the reason that he came into the world or the motive behind this perfect gift was the absolute overwhelming love of God for you and for me. There's a Greek word, agape. You've heard it many times. And agape is, is something that we as humans can never, ever experience because we don't know how to agape. We know how to love erotically. We know how to love our family. We know how to love in, in a variety of different ways because there's all kinds of human Greek words that describe love, but there's only one word that describes the love that God has given to us and that is agape and that's what he did when he sent Jesus into the world he said I agape you
not only was love the motive, but the object of this perfect gift, as I said at the beginning, was that God came into an undeserving world, and the object of that love to come into this world was to save the likes of you and me. I mean, people who have rejected God, people who came born into sin and who lived their lives in a sinful way, and, and, and yet God said, I'm going to come into this world and I am going to save them through my son, Jesus Christ. And fourthly, the purpose of God's great gift is in simple terms to keep man from his greatest calamity and that is eternal punishment or to be banished to hell for all eternity. Because that's where man is heading. That's where the human race is headed today. It is headed to eternal punishment, it is headed to an eternal hell. And the only way to escape that eternal hell is by coming to Jesus Christ on faith, repenting of our sin and saying to Jesus, Jesus, forgive me, I commit myself, I give my heart to you. So we've looked at this and we see that God came into the world and that he, he looked at the world and he came to an undeserving world. His motive was because he loved the world and he wanted to give that agape love to the world. And his purpose was to save the likes of us. And he focused his heart upon who we are and what we are. And finally, the condition. The condition of God's love to us. We've got to believe. Even though Jesus came into the world, he did not come into the world to say to you and to me, because I am here and because I came into the world, okay, you're saved. <clears throat> Blanket coverage. So they say on the nationwide coverage, you know, you got blanket coverage on the insurance. It's, it's blanket coverage, all right. But each person under that blanket has got to believe and got to trust and got to put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. They've got to repent of our sin and they've got to look to Jesus and say, Jesus, please forgive me because I put my faith and my trust in you. It'll change your life. It really will. And most of us in this room, if not all of us in this room today, have experienced that, and we understand the absolute life-changing work that is done in our lives when we do what I just said. Repent. Come to Jesus on, and ask his forgiveness and believe that he is who he is and trust him with our life for the rest of our life. So we've looked at this. We've seen the fact that God came into an undeserving world, that his motive was the agape love and that the object of that love was the fallen human humanity. And the purpose is that we be saved from ourselves and from condemnation. And then the condition was that we have to receive. In Ephesians ch chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, it says, For by grace, for by grace you are saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast that I am so good that God is going to save me simply because I'm good. But it says it's by grace that you have been saved. And only by grace. Grace is not getting 
is, is getting what we do not deserve and mercy is not getting what we do deserve. And God's grace, forsaking all, forsaking all, I come to Christ. So once we come to know Christ, once we have given our heart to him, what happens next? Well, there is a result to the receiving of that gift. And the result is to, as you saw on the video this morning of this young woman who said, you know, I, I just felt God calling me to be a missionary. I saw pictures of these missionaries killed in the Ecuadorian jungle uh, and, and, and I, my heart was broken and I wanted to be a missionary and now she's gone all over the world being a missionary for God simply because God broke her heart. So the results of all of this is to go and tell who Jesus is what he did, why he did. Jesus, Jesus Christ, if, if, if you go to any movies anymore, it don't make a difference what they're rated, except maybe Super G movies, you're going to hear the name Jesus Christ at some point in time, even on TV anymore you're hearing it, and you're going to hear it as a curse word, that people are just using the name of Jesus Christ as a curse word. Why don't they use Muhammad? Why don't they use some other god of the Hindu faith or some other faith around the world? But Jesus Christ is the only name that they use as a curse word. Because people hate Jesus until they get to know him. And then once they get to know him, he's not a curse word anymore. He's their savior. He's their Lord. He's the one who came and gave his life for them. And the sad thing to me is, is that so many people today, so many people reject the truth of who Jesus Christ is. They reject why he came into the world. They, re they reject it to their, their failing to the point that when they die off of this earth that they will spend eternity in hell. And to me that breaks my heart to know that people would choose to do that. Why? When God did so much to save us. He was born. He was born in a stable. Oh, side note. I, I just admit me to say this. This sanctuary decoration is great. I don't, know, I don't know who's responsible for all of that, but I, I really love the decoration. It's good. But anyway, let's go back to the, to the message. But anyway, he was born. He was born in a manger. Do you know what a manger is? A manger is a feeding trough for animals. And Jesus was laid on some hay in a feeding trough while the angel, animals stood around saying, hey, get out of my feeding trough because I'm hungry. Okay? He was in a manger. The manger probably didn't look like this. It was probably a cave out of the, carved out of the side of the mountain in Bethlehem. And there he was in that manger and just a few shepherds came and a couple years later the wise men showed up. And he was a baby. He was born just like you and me into a troubled world. But he grew up to be different from you and me because he grew up to be our Savior and to be our Lord. And if you want to understand the, the, the true agape that God has offered to us. All we have to do is look to Jesus because he did it for you, for you, for you, and for me. 
And do you deserve it? Do I deserve it? No. But am I grateful that God loves me enough, that God agape'd me enough to send his only son to experience the pain of living in the midst of his creation and being beaten nearly half to death and going to the cross and hanging there for six hours and dying for my sins. Should have been me on that cross. Should have been you on that cross. But it was Jesus. And you want to know how much Jesus loves us this much. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for your grace, for your mercy. Thank you, oh God, that you allowed me and so many others to have faith and to follow you. Lord, I'm beyond a shadow of a doubt certain that there probably most everyone in this room today know you as their personal Savior. But Lord, if there's even one here today who does not understand, does not know why you spread your arms upon that cross and died for us, oh God, God, may today be the day of salvation. Because it breaks my heart, oh God, as I said earlier, that that so many people would even choose to spend eternity in hell because they refuse to accept you as their Savior. And Lord, if there's no one in this room, it may be somebody on the, watching by video today who does not know you. And Lord, I want them to be clear in their heart and their mind that Jesus died for them and that he cares and that he loves us with that agape love and that all he desires Lord is that we repent of our sins and and seek his forgiveness and, and put our faith and our trust in him oh dear God may we do that may this Christmas season be not so much the focus on gifts the physical gifts But may this Christmas season, Lord, be the focus upon the perfect gift of God, Jesus Christ. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together. know that in your heart that he does love us if you don't maybe today is the day of salvation for you or the day that you just need to come and say Lord I've strayed away from you and it's time I return if God is speaking to you you come Jesus to Calvary
Well, everyone is invited down to the youth building for the annual Christmas dinner. Uh, when I first came here, I could not understand why that building was there and the sanctuary was here. But having passed through the church with the fellowship hall underneath of the church, and on these times when we had meals, and you up there trying to preach, and all of the smell of this food comes rising up through the floor, I now begin to understand why the building is there. So anyway, please come and share the fellowship together as we go down to the building. Brother Andy, you come and dismiss us. Um, I do have instructions for lunch from Kelly. When we go down, go from the right-hand door and go around the hallway to the small assembly room and come back, and we're going to start on the opposite end from where we enter. That way we don't have to line up in the rain. So... I mean, unless you absolutely want to stay in the rain, you can, but I'm trying to keep you dry. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the time we have together each morning, each Sunday morning, um, to hear your word preached and um, answer us to respond and reflect on, the, on what you did for us on the cross. And I'm thankful that we, get, that we are celebrating, in this season of celebrating, um, you sending your son into this earth. Um, to ultimately die for us. And I pray that we take this time and reflect on what exactly that means for us and that we ultimately have the opportunity to spend eternity with you. And I pray for the food that you have uh, blessed, blessed us with and all the hands that have prepared it. And I pray um, that it will nourish in our bodies. And I pray that you bless our fellowship as we eat. And I pray all these things in your son's name. Amen.